My aunt and uncle used to go to Yellowstone for two weeks every single year. As a child, I was always curious about what they would do the whole time they were there because my family would go for a few days at a time and not every single year, but most years. But now that I'm older and wiser, I know that you can never run out of things to do at Yellowstone. We did another video on the Yellowstone Top 10 and we found that we just left off too many things. So we wanted to do another one on the Yellowstone Next 10. So if you're a Yellowstone regular or if you have a longer trip scheduled, maybe you'll be able to fit in some of these things on your trip. Okay, so these are in no particular order. They're just 10 other super cool things to do. So the number one is Firehole Lake Drive. It will only take you about 30 minutes. It's three miles long, but on that drive, you can see the Great Fountain Geyser. There is a little river, there's a lake. Uh, it's one way road, no motorhomes, but a cool place to go check out and you don't even have to get out of your car. There are a couple of active geysers there you might see, and one of them is a predictable geyser, a Great Fountain Geyser, which has huge crowds that gather around to watch this go off. It's really one of the prettiest geysers in the park. Okay, number two is Tower Fall. Tower is located in the north end of the park. It's, this is about a 30 to 40 minute stop. It's a really short walk to Tower Fall, and you, Tower Fall is a really gorgeous waterfall that drops a long, long way. And they also have a little ice cream store there, a little convenience store that you can get some ice cream or a treat, something like that. And there are plenty of wildlife sightings around in that area because it's located on the northern end where a lot of animals are. Number three, attend the campfire programs. Those are held outside of the, just like right inside the campgrounds, all of them, almost every night. You'll wanna check the newspaper they give you when you come into the park, but they last about 45 minutes and they cover all sorts of interesting things from the animals in the park, like they might do one on bison one night and on wolves another night. They'll talk about the geysers. They may talk about the fires in the park, all sorts of interesting topics. And it's not so much that the topics are so interesting, but it's the environment. They have a big fire. They've got all the wooden benches out and it's just fun to, you know, dress warm, snug up with your family and listen to, uh, listen to a little lecture about the, about the parks. The other cool thing to do to, to make that trip fun is to go get the junior ranger have like pack it. You can print it off at home or go to a visitor center and get that. It's really cool because they gear it towards certain ages. So, you know, like one, one packet could be for ages five to 16 and they'll, they have it coded by animal. You know, if you're six years old, maybe you only have to do three pages, but if you're 14, you have to do 11 pages. Mm -hmm. And, and even Matt's mom, she always wants to get the, the Grammy, the Grammy yeah. Super Ranger badge. Grandma Ranger. Yeah, <laughs> so she always gets one and, and does it herself because it's so fun. We always buy our kids a little stuffed animal if they complete the Junior Ranger, and so they really, <laughs> that's really what they're doing it for. Uh, one other thing on the campfire programs is you don't need to be staying at the campground to go to those. You can just, a lot of the campgrounds, they have a parking area you can park and go visit the, or go attend the campfire program. Okay, number four is Mud Volcano. So. This is a, a geyser basin. It's kind of its own geyser basin, but they call it mud volcano because they are mud pots. Mud pots are kind of these boiling, burping pots of mud. The acid has uh, disintegrated the rock around it and just kind of turned it into these little mud pots. These aren't as popular as some of the gorgeous deep blue, uh, colorful hot springs that you see at like West Thumb or over at Midway Geyser Basin maybe. But I still think they're really cool. Um, it's just kind of otherworldly, really, to see these mud, th these boiling mud pots. And then there's also these steam vents. They call them fumaroles there. So they have one there that's real famous called the Dragon's Mouth. And the last time we were there at Mud Volcano, there were some bison wandering around right on the boardwalks. <laughs> Um, so it's actually, I think, a very pretty little area with some trees and some greenery and all that stuff, but it's kind of a stinky, smelly thing. Um, maybe it's not everybody's taste, but I like it. Okay, next one, number five, is Yellowstone Lake. Yellowstone Lake is humongous. It is, I'm looking at my notes, 20 miles wide, 14 miles long, and at its deepest spot, 394 feet deep. It's like the ocean, so deep. And you know, 
people do not swim in this lake. It averages 41 degrees most mm -hmm. of the year. It's freezing cold. Mm -hmm. But I can say that as a child, since we were Yellowstone regulars, we didn't spend a ton of time going to geysers. What we would do is we would haul our 16 foot aluminum boat to Yellowstone and we'd go out on the lake and we would fish a couple days while we were there. And I'm not sure exactly why my dad liked to fish there so much because I didn't, I didn't appreciate the scenery, although I do now, but we'd go out there and spend the entire day on the lake. And, and even when you'd fish on the lake, they have, you know, Yellowstone's really into preserving the native species. And so, they have some very strict rules on what fish you can keep and which ones you have to throw back. But it was always fun to go do that. And, and my mom and dad even went on some of their first trips to Yellowstone together and my mother hates trout, but she would never fess up that she liked it. She'd just keep putting lots of ketchup on it and say, this is delicious. <laughs> okay, number six is the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center. This is not in Yellowstone, but it's just right outside of the park in West Yellowstone. When you go to Yellowstone, you're not guaranteed to see a grizzly bear or a wolf. Um, you have to get to the right areas at the right times and get a little lucky maybe. But here at Grizzly Wolf and Discovery Center, you're guaranteed to see them. So what's really cool about this place is they rotate the grizzly bears. They bring them out and provide, they kind of hide food in the rocks and the logs and stuff like that. And there's a place for them to swim. So what's cool about it is when they come out, they're ready to be active. And so they're wandering around hunting for food and swimming and stuff where you know when you see them at zoos a lot of times they're just taking a nap so this that was one thing we really really enjoyed about this the wolves are awesome uh, to see as well because they have little families there little packs of wolves there as well and and then they have some other animals there like otters they have a lot of birds there so this was really one of the highlights of our most recent trip was the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center. Yeah, it's a bit pricey for what it is. It's pretty small, it's about $15 per person to get in. But the nice thing is, is your ticket's good for two days. So it's a great way to just maybe end your day, especially like if you were trying to see an animal and you didn't get to see one in the park, you could kind of have a consolation prize. But really, you don't see anything like this anywhere else with the animals being so active and seeing how they search for their food. And they even the pamphlet, they even, tell you a little bit of the animal's backstory, yeah. which is kind of cool too. It does close kind of early though, five, so that yeah. that's, makes it a little difficult to kind of cut into your day. But it is open 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, please, if, if you're getting any value out of this video, please click that like button, it helps us out. Okay, number seven are just the roadside waterfalls. You hear about the upper falls and the lower falls and tower, but Yellowstone actually has a few more that are just right off the side of the road. And generally, if you're trying to hit those big top 10 attractions, you skip over these because you're in a hurry trying to get to where you're going. And I understand that you can see waterfalls lots of different places, but even the, the B-list waterfalls of, of Yellowstone oh, yeah. are still gorgeous and, and no work. And no I mean, work. No. I mean, they're high, <laughs> these are high, we call them high value sites because oh, yeah. they just pull out in the parking lot, get out and look at the waterfall. Yeah, I mean, there's so many of them. There's Virginia, Kepler Cascades, Gibbon. You say this other one because I cannot say it correctly. I think it's called Undine Falls on the <laughs> northern end. Um, Gibbon is my, uh, of these ones, I think Gibbon is probably my favorite. I really like Gibbon a lot. It kind of splays out. It's really beautiful coming along the rock. Oh, yeah. I mean, it really is a shame that if you're trying to fit in those type, top 10 sites, you might not see these waterfalls, but that's a major benefit for coming back a second time or or just spending a few extra days. Now on our guide that we've prepared on our website, um, we, we help you fit these in. So these, even though we're calling these the next 10, we help you fit them into your, your trip. Because if you plan it out right, you can do a lot of these, so. Yep, it's all about having a plan and being efficient. Mm -hmm. Okay, number eight is Black Sand Basin. So this is really kind of part of the Upper Geyser Basin, which is Old Faithful and the surrounding area. But Upper Geyser Basin is so big that there's really three basins within it that have their own parking lots. There's um, Upper Geyser, there's the Old Faithful right there. And then there's also Biscuit Basin that has its own parking lot and Black Sand Basin has its own parking lot. This one is a little smaller. It really only takes about 20 to 30 minutes to, really not even that, to walk around the boardwalk a little bit. 
but and, and so for that reason it's less visited like you're not going to get the big tour buses dropping people off at, at a spot like this and yet it has the hot springs the beautiful blue hot springs colors around it it has the mountains and the trees right next to it it has one pretty active geyser called cliff geyser that goes off quite a bit put on a big show for us last time and then it has a river running through it yeah I and mean, this is one of the prettiest areas and and you'll probably be able to get parking there and it's right by it's Old great. Faithful so you're not having to drive anywhere far you're yeah. already gonna be going to Old Faithful yeah I think that's one of the I mean there's no secrets in in Yellowstone but I mean in terms of lesser known sites I think that's one of them in Yellowstone mm -hmm. one of the coolest ones oh yeah okay number nine is Fort Yellowstone seriously this is the thing that just kills me about Yellowstone is every time you go there you learn something new and and it's in Mammoth and I used to you know we'd go there for picnic lunches and and I'd see these cool old buildings off to the side and they'd be like I wonder what those are for well they were for Fort Yellowstone the US Army had to go occupy Yellowstone for 30 years in the late 1900s or late 1800s early 1900s to keep poachers and self-serving people out of there and to protect the park. And there are 36 buildings that, that that army built for just to run the park, for their soldiers to sleep in. And they're they're cool looking. They're still used as offices now. There's a few buildings you can go in, but you can do a 45 minute self-guided walking tour around those buildings. And something that really blew me away as I was researching this is that army spent five years in Yellowstone before they decided to build those buildings. Can you imagine sleeping outside <laughs> all winter in Yellowstone? <laughs> oh, terrible. So anyway, Fort Yellowstone's pretty cool. Uh-huh. So when they, when they first set Yellowstone aside as a national park, there was no such thing as the National Park Service or any body to govern this whole thing. They didn't even have money to pay a superintendent. So they, they basically just put the army in charge of managing the park. Um, so that there's a whole interesting history there. In fact, down near Norris, they have the Museum of the National Park Ranger. And rangers really developed from these early military people that were, that were uh, in charge of the park. That's kind of how rangers came about. Um, also, she mentioned a guided tour. On the app, on the official Yellowstone app, they have all sorts of audio tours that you can download. Now, there's no cell connection in Yellowstone National Park, so you have to... Um, download some of these things before you go there okay but you can download the app and then you can download the audio guides on the app and they have an audio guide for Fort Yellowstone to walk around and they'll tell you all about it all right number 10 is just outside the park activities in Yellowstone there's actually quite a few most of them are in West Yellowstone towards the bottom middle part but some of them are actually up in Gardner and we have a whole video about this but there's river rafting there's plays there's like Matt said, the Wolf and Grizzly Discovery Center. You could shoot guns. Yeah, the big gun fun. There's rodeo, horseback rides, river rafting, hot springs. Yeah, so I just there's there's just a lot you can do outside the park too. And and sometimes, especially if you're on a longer trip, it's really nice to mix one of these activities in. Especially, you know, when you travel in a group, people have different interests and and maybe if they're like me, they don't want to see seven geyser basins. Maybe three is good and they want to mix it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So those outside the park activities are pretty cool. So there you have it, Yellowstone's next 10. If you're going for the first time, check out our top 10 doing the park properly video because those are going to be the things you really have to do. These are things that are, there's really not a bad attraction in Yellowstone. No. But they're, they didn't quite make the top list, but we still think they're great and we think you should go to them if you have some extra time. Yep, check out that video. Um, and we also have a, long, a much longer trip planner video that you want to check out that we give you, we try to give you all the details, walk you through how to plan a trip to Yellowstone. And then we have resources on our website, we're in the Rockies.com. If you don't want to go through all the work to plan it out, just buy our guide and we'll walk you through it and we have an itinerary there and an audio guide to tell you all about the park because we don't want you to just enjoy your trip or, or to, to have an efficient trip but we want you to really experience the park and get the most out of it so there you go thanks for watching